Greetings in the bonds of peace and welcome to Wani Ishai One. My name is Dr. Sean Lyons. I am a forever student of the divine vision and revelations given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley proved these facts on three ecclesiastical peace missions to every religious organization and school of the highest learning around the world from 1958 to 1976. As a result of his divine vision and revelation, he transcribed Elohim, the archetype original pattern of the universe. which was given to every school of the highest learning, every religious organization, every president elect, and queens and kings of the earth, along with a Holy Name Version Bible, transliterated by A.B. Trana, an Italian Hebrew, with the true and correct names and titles of the father and his son. Yahweh is the name of the father. And Elohim, is his divine title. Yahshua, the Messiah, is the name of his son. Within the inscription, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley revealed to the world the threefold pattern Yahweh Elohim gave to Moses upon Mount Sinai. And later commanded Moses to build one exactly like it within the wilderness of Sinai, which was the establishment of the apothecary. And later on revealed this to John the Revelator on the Isle of Patmos, that Yahshua the Messiah was the true heir, and Yahshua the Messiah, whom Yahweh have sent for the remission of sins by the operation of blood, water, and spirit. In Hebrews 9, 14 through 15 reveals that Yahshua offered himself one time through his eternal spirit to the Father by his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on AD 33 and AD 40 to this present day in the kingdom age. This can be found on page 69 through 86 of volume one of the comparative analyst or apocalyptic confirmation of the creation. Dr. Henry C. Kinley also revealed in the same publication on page 129, volume one entitled Yahweh the all in all, that Yahweh is the substance, the limits and bounds of everything, the all in all. That being said, study to show thyself approved, a workman who needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And may the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, teach you all things. Our founder had gave us rules of engagement pertaining to his vision, which is the manifestation will change, but the principle will remain the same. My aims and objectives are first to help you find Yahshua, the Messiah in your heart and in your mind. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 5, 1 Corinthians 6, 17 through 20, and 2 Corinthians 3, 1 through 6. My second aim and objective is, is to show you how Yahweh wrote his laws in your inward parts. Jeremiah 31, 31, Hebrews 8, 10 through 13. My third aim and objective is, 
is to help you discern the sons of Elohim and the sons of the devil. First John third chapter, first John four, one through ten. My fourth aim and objective is is to show and prove that Yahshua is the true Eloah, whom Yahweh hath sent. First John five and twenty, John seventeen and three. At this particular time, we will have our prayer, our scripture reading, announcements, our script ascertainment, and perception and direction exam, the speaker, the doxology, which will be Romans, the 16th chapter, verses 25 through 27. At this particular time, I will be giving the prayer for this evening's class. Heavenly Father, once again, I thank you for another opportunity to share something about your divine purpose, pattern, and plan. My prayer this evening, Father, is that I ask that if I be thy servant, Father, and you be in me, Father, that my prayer is that whoever shall be ashamed of me in the words that I speak pertain to your purpose. And may you be ashamed of them before your father. Your body is thy servant, Father. Whoever shall make me father, for any different reason, Father. I ask, Father, that you forgive them, Father. And that you bring light unto them, Father. That you present the question, Father, to them, Father, why is it that they hate my servant? If I have done anything to offend anybody, I ask for forgiveness of them and of them. And I ask, Father, that you forgive me. which will be um, it will be second kings the first chapter second kings the second chapters up unto verse 18 I will be reading um, this out of the King James study Bible with the true names inserted. Second Kings, first and second chapter. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And Ahiza fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go and inquire of Baal Zebub, the deity of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. But the angel of Yahweh said to Elijah the Tishabite, Arise, go up to meet the messenger of the king of Samaria and say unto them, It is not because there is not a Elohim in Israel, that ye go to inquire of Baal Zerah, the deity of Ekron? Now therefore, thus saith Yahweh, thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. And when the messenger turned back unto him, he said unto them, Why are ye now turned back? Said unto us, go and return to the king. 
Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, If I be a man of Elohim, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy 50. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed thee. Again, also, he sent another And he answered and said unto him, O man of Elohim, the half the king said, Come down to the king. And in fire, he moaned and down to heaven. And besought him and said unto him, O man of Elom, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty, thy servant, be precious in thy sight. Behold, there came fire down from heaven and burnt up the two captains of the former fifty with their fifty. Therefore, let my life now be precious in thy sight. And the angel of Yahweh said unto Elijah, Go down with him, be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down with him unto the king. And he said unto him, Thus saith Yahweh, for as much as thou hast sent messengers to inquire of Beelzebub, the deity of Ekron, it is not because there is no Elohim in Israel to inquire of his word. Therefore, thou shalt not come down off of the bed of which thou art going up, but shalt surely die. So he died according to the word of Yahweh, which Elijah has spoken. And Jehoram reigned in his stead in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaz, which he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? Chapter 2. And it came to pass when, Yah when Yahweh would take up Elijah unto heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for Yahweh have sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, as Yahweh liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that Yahweh will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yeah, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for Yahweh hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As Yahweh liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that Yahweh will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yeah, I know it. 
hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee, hear, for Yahweh hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, as Yahweh liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And the two went on. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither so that the two went over on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were going over that Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I will do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee that a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, thou ask a hard thing. said and he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said where is Yahweh Elohim of Elijah and when he had also spitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah do rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. And they said unto him, Behold now, there be with thy servant fifty strong men, let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master. Lest preadventure the spirit of Yahweh have taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, Ye shall not sin. And when they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, Send them therefore fifty men. And they sought three days and found him not. And when they came again to him, for he tarried at Jericho, he said unto them, did I say not to you, go not? I have read to you first and second Kings, um, second Kings first and second chapter uh, one through 18. At this particular time, um, we will have um, our announcements um, and we will have our scripture uh, examination and perception direction exam. Um, our announcements uh, will be um, that uh, Elder um, Van Hook might not be with us this evening. Um, and then um, other than that, um, as of right now, um, I have no more announcements. I haven't heard anything back um, pertaining to um, Dr. Uh, Alex Bailey. I hope um, this present time, everything is still well with him, um, with his family. Um, and um, from my understanding um, that they will be having um, services for um, Dr. Uh, Lucille Daniels um, this month 
Um, they have not set a date um, set in stone um, right at this particular time, but I know um, it will become upcoming soon. And so um, with those um, few announcements, um, let us get into the gospel and um, start our um, examination exam. <clears throat> now, where we left off and what we have been doing is, is that we have been showing forth how that we've been applying everything that has been manifesting right here within the creative age. We've been applying the same principles in the antediluvian age, as well as within the post-diluvian age. So where we are right now is, is that we are within the post-diluvian age. And what we will be doing is, is that we will be going back over the same fundamental principles that what we have been basically going over to um, substantiate the things that has taken place um, within the spirit that are remanifesting themselves right over here within the post diluvian age. So now tonight, if you have observed, um, we have read uh, the story of Elijah and the things that he done some of the things that he'd done pertain to when he was taber tabernacling around um, in the flesh. Um, what we did was previously, um, we had spoke about how that Moses uh, was a faithful witness, like unto how we have the uh, angels that are manifesting here on the Ark of the Covenant. Here, we just got through reading, reading how that we had Elijah, which was one of the ones who appeared, see, uh, when Yahshua the Messiah went um, up into uh, Mount Tabor in AD uh, 32, right here, based upon his uh, transfiguration before Peter, James, and John. And then it said that uh, Moses had appeared, and then uh, Elijah had appeared, see. And so then um, the conversation went further and Peter um, asked, was it good for Peter, James and John to be there? And then he asked if he could build three tabernacles, uh, one for thee, one for Moses and one for Elijah. So now based on the uh, scripture lesson, which we just have read, it showed forth how that some of the things that Elijah had done pertaining to uh, the things that he did in his life that went according to uh, the threefold intangible pattern. So within um, the first chapter of King, we have it that um, the king, Ahab, was upon his deathbed and that he sent his messengers to go to Ekron to ask Belzebub, the deity of Ekron, whether if he will recover or not from the disease that he had. So therefore it said that the angel of Yahweh had uh, told Elisha, Elijah, to go and tell him that he will not recover and that why is he re um, requiring uh, this information from a deity of Ekron and ask him a question, is there not a Elohim that is within Israel? And later on within the scriptures, it shows forth how that Elijah went up on a hill, okay? Like into the third compartment here within the most holy place, okay? And said that he sat on a hill and that a captain came with 50 and told him to come down. And so this was done three times. One, two, and three. And so therefore we come back here to the cosmogony and we're showing forth 
the same three witnesses of which we showed you in the beginning on plates four, five, and six, which are correlating to the same principles as we correlated the three trips of the high priest on the day of atonement, the three times that the dove had left the ark, Noah's ark. And what we're doing now is that we're perpetuating all the way down and we're showing you, see, within the post-Diluvian age, how that three trips, see, um, of how men of 50 are three times that the king sent three captains with three groups of 50 men. And as well, this is the same principles, see, that we used and we showed forth um, not only the three trips of um, the high priest, um, the, tree, the three trips of, of, of the dove going in and out of, of Noah's Ark, we also showed these three principles manifest, see, from this particular, from these particular plates before the first day of creation in other locations within the antediluvian age, within the post-diluvian age. So this is the explanation on why that we see how fire had came down from heaven on the two occasions to consume the group of 50 and the captains. So this is the explanation on the reason why that we go back here to show you what had happened. Then it says that Elisha, see, after he had received the mantle. And another thing which we're trying to sit up and show to establish is that here, when we observe how that we have Elijah manifesting as a witness here, just as we showed you that manifested here, come back here, okay, to show you how that with the transfiguration, here again, we are showing forth Peter, James, and John, and we had given you the explanation, the reason why that we have Moses manifest himself right here. I'm going to try to uh, zoom in just a little bit more so that we can see the principles a little bit more clearly. And so what we did was we showed the principles of reason why that we had Yahshua upon the mountain here. We had Yahshua here, see? And we showed forth the reason why we had one hand manifest going this way, and then another hand that was going this way pointing towards Moses. And we also see how he has the book pertaining to the first five books that he written, see, pertaining to the law. And so therefore we understand that here when Moses has on his turquoise garments, it is showing forth that pertaining to the law that Moses has written that Moses was up under the law of circumcision as well as any Hebrew, see? And so therefore we have Yahshua pointing his hand, see, uh, towards Moses is because for the simple fact he is showing forth how he is alpha here and omega here. And Yahshua Messiah must fulfill all things pertaining to the law of Moses. Here, when we see how we have Elijah right here and Elijah having on purple garments, our blue garments, see, is showing forth how that Elijah was translated into the kingdom, just like he manifests the same principles of Enoch. But what's going on here that when we are picking up the principles on how what we just read, see, about what Elijah did, and we're looking at his placement, see, it is showing forth how that Elijah had manifested all the principles of what we understand that manifested with the archangel Michael because he manifested principles of fire. Now, when I say that to you and we're looking at how that when we see how that we have Elijah here manifesting as John the Baptist and Moses here, they are picking up two faithful witnesses, okay? 
so that with the witnesses, what we must do is that when we go back into the scriptures, we must see the same thing pertaining to when we are talking about our uh, perception and um, direction exam. What we have to do is, is be able to apply all the same principles or proper principles of like what I said within the beginning, that when you see principles of an angel, see, see and you're looking at uh, principles of an angel that's within a tree, we have to be able to see what manifestation that the angel is manifesting, to whom he is manifesting at this particular time. Now, here we understand that pertaining to the holy place, like it is said by our founder, that within the holy place, this is where visions and revelations can be seen. We read over there um, within the uh, popular confirmation, our last lecture, that within the uh, holy place, see, is a compartment where one can see visions and revelations. We understand that pertaining to when we come here, we understand how that Eve was seeing a vision of Lucifer and manifest himself to her, to where she had seen him in a vision. And then she had a conversation with him. So here we see the negative creature, Lucifer, the evil angelic creature. And here he is appearing to the woman, manifesting himself at a tree and then revealing the characteristics as a serpent. So therefore, when we see that throughout the history, that we must see these principles remanifest again. Now we have to understand that the manifestation will change, but the principle will remain the same. So therefore, what we have to do is, is that when we are looking, see, at the principles that are manifesting on the vision of our founder, what we must do is, is that we must apply them, see, based upon how that they came in from the realm of eternity. And so therefore, with these principles, you may be able to see the direction of the perception and direction exam. And let me show you as follows. Here in the beginning, we understand that after the war in heaven and the angelic we have the angelic transgression which we can see here with the endemic transgression we showed you how that this is no more than a manifestation of how we have the angelic and the physical taking on its manifestation within the concrete creation or the physical creation. We see that everything that had manifested within the angelic is taking its residence within the physical. Here are your prime examples that are manifesting right here. Therefore, now that we see that after the endemic transgression, how that both mysteries are manifesting themselves within the earth plane. Here we see how we have Cain, see, pertaining to the scriptures, how Yahweh had told Cain, see, after he had offered his offering unto Yahweh, which was fruit, which was not pleasing unto Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim has sent him to his brother and told him to go ask him for a lamb, see? So now, what happens is that when we come right here and we look at what's transpiring right here, see, and this is happening in the antediluvian age, what happens is, is that pertaining to the migration, we must see the exact same principles re-manifest, okay? So now when we come back here, we can see how that the story is doing nothing but repeat itself because now it is showing forth how that we have the man Moses and then he's out here, see, keeping his father-in-law, Jethro, or Ruel's sheep. Just like how we had Abel keeping his sheep right out here, okay? And then it shows forth here how that when we look back within time, we see how Cain has slayed Abel 
And he had this rod that was manifesting right there within his hand. And then we see how that this is a spiritual immersion in wickedness pertaining to the 666 that is manifesting upon his head. And then we see the 666 manifesting upon his hand because he had slew his brother and there is the rod in his hand which he slew his brother. This is the explanation on how that when we come to our migratory trek chart, and we see the man Moses manifesting himself right out here, see, within the holy place, see, after that he came up out of the uh, land of Egypt, see. He did not come to the divided waters of the Red Sea at this particular time, but he went around, see, the back way, see, on the backside of Sinai to come right out here, see, to where he met his wife at the well, see. And so therefore it is showing forth how that when we're going back in time, picking up the same principles of which we picked up, see over there in the antediluvian age, we can see how they are re-manifesting themselves. So now we understand that when Moses said that he had seen this bush, he says, let me turn aside to see this great sight. This is the same principle, see, that had manifested, see. When we come back and we look here, pertaining to what happened, to the man and the woman within the garden to where she said, let me look at this tree or observe this because she said that when it, when she saw the tree to make one wise that she had partaken. And so therefore this is showing forth how that the manifestation has changed, but the principle remains the same because it said that she saw, see, and she saw the tree to make one wise and it was desirable and so she partook and she ate. And so therefore, when we come here and we look at our migratory trek chart, we see how that Moses, when he seen the bush being burned and not being consumed, he said, let me turn aside and see this great sight. And so therefore, when we show forth how the woman, see, was in the garden talking to the angel, see, within the tree, here, it is showing forth how we see Moses, see, seeing an angel in a bush or in a tree, see, to fulfill the same things which had taken place, see, within the Garden of Eden. As I said, the principles that had manifested all the way through the creative age, through the antediluvian age, see, and that had manifested themselves in the post-diluvian age, in the early stages of, of it, as far as when we are in the post diluvian age, which is the third age in the third dispensation. And then later on within the post diluvian age, as we manifest within the fourth dispensation, you can see these principles re-manifest themselves all the way through from, like I said, the angelic manifesting themselves within the physical. So we understand that when the man is looking at the angel, see, within the bush, see, just how the man and the woman were naked and not ashamed, the woman was bearing her souls when she was at the tree. This is the explanation to when Yahweh Elohim had told the man, see, take off thy shoes because where thy stand is holy ground. We have to understand that when Adam and Eve were in the most holy place or within the garden of Eden, that was holy ground, see? Mm -hmm. So these as I said, we have to pick up the same fundamental principles to show forth what was happening. See, back then, it's the same principles that are manifesting right now. So when we go back and we see how that Cain had slew his brother, see, with the staff or with the rod, and it was pertaining to how he had 666 that he was being emerged in spiritual wickedness. And then the 666 that was pertaining to his hand because he had used that rod to kill his brother. This is the reason why Yahweh Elohim had asked Moses, what is that in, it is in thy hand? And Moses said, it is a rod. Yahweh Elohim told Moses to cast it down upon the ground. And as I shared with you with the principles that were previously, see, it had became a serpent and Moses fled from it. Here, when we go back to the garden, it shows forth how that when the man and the woman were being extirpated up out of the garden, we see how the serpent is manifesting or intertwining himself between their legs, see, or their feet, because we're showing forth how that the souls, see, see how they bear their souls to where it show forth that they had no sins and no transgression. It is showing forth now that their foundation based upon they bared their souls is satanic because of their disobedience. 
This is the reason why that we have the serpent see that are intertwined in between their feet as they are coming up out of the garden. So now when we look back, see, we can understand how that when Yahweh asked him to throw it on the ground, the staff upon the ground, it became a serpent. We see why, because of the serpent that came out with the man and the woman when they were extirpated up out of the garden. Yeah. So now, the reason why, too, that it became a serpent is because when we go back here, and we are seeing the principles of 666, see, of when he slayed his brother, there's also another manifestation, see, of that particular rod within his hand, see, to show forth the markings of the beast, see? Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So these are the <laughs> principles that are manifesting themselves right there. And so now, see, we understand that here, when we look and we see how that Moses is seeing an angel within the bush, it is also as well showing forth how that you see it is a fire within this particular bush because it is showing forth that when Moses, see, was seeing this, that it was evening time. Okay, and we understand that it was the sixth hour when Moses is having this vision. Why is that? Because of the same principles that manifest pertaining to this fiery cloud. How that Yahweh Elohim said that it shall be a cloud by fire at night and a pillar of a cloud by day. So therefore we understand the reason why that Moses was seeing this fiery bush at this particular time. And so therefore we understand that if Moses is seeing how that he is seeing Elohim manifest himself within this bush, see, we understand that it is picking up the principle of it being wood or a tree. So therefore we see the angel that is manifesting himself within the bush there. It is evident for us to come here and see how we have an angel manifesting himself right here, closing the door to Noah's Ark because this ark is made of out of shittim wood and covered with slime and pitch. So therefore it is showing forth how that we have an angel that is manifesting himself within a bush or within a tree pertaining to the principles that are manifesting here with Noah's ark. So therefore, if you see an angel manifesting right there, closing the door to the ark, it is because we understand that the ark is made of out of wood. And so therefore we can see how that the angel is manifesting himself within a bush and the bush is burning and not being consumed. As I said, we must go back, see, within the scriptures and see how all these things must apply pertaining to what's manifesting right out here. Because see, this is a recapitulation, what had manifested within the beginning, because the scripture says that death had reading, ring from Adam unto Moses, but not after the similitude of Adam's transgression. So therefore, if death had reigning all the way up into the time, see going back 4,000 years, and we see that as remanifesting with Moses, then what happens is, is that Moses must, must, just like the Messiah, go back and manifest the same principles of 4,000 years of time all the way up into the time where he is so that Yahweh Elohim could remanifest his purpose, see, through Moses, just like how he did with the other partridges within the past. So now we understand that here, see, we show forth how that we picked up the principles that had manifested within the antediluvian age. And so now what happens is, is that pertaining to this, see, that it brings us all the way down to where we were before. And this is to show forth now, see, of how that Moses must manifest the same principles, see, of what's manifesting right here. Now, if you understand what I said about that Moses was out here, see, in the most holy place, see, see, or in the holy place, and he was watching, see, his father-in-law's sheep, and his father-in-law was the priest of Midian, see? Mm -hmm. And here we have, see, Abraham, see, manifesting himself with Melchizedek, which is the priest of Salem. So therefore the principle which we understand that is manifesting, which we see right here, that is manifesting with the man Moses, see, is that his father-in-law was a priest. Mm -hmm. Okay, the high priest, see, of Midian. And so therefore we see how we have his forefather, the high priest, see, of Salem. 
And so therefore the same principles, see, that is manifesting with the portrait, see, Abraham must manifest with the same principles, see, of Moses. Because see here at this burning bush, we have to understand that when Yahweh Elohim seeing that Moses turned aside, he said unto Moses that I am the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that he was the Elohim of his father, Amram. You understand what I'm saying? And it says that Moses had hit his face. See? And so therefore, we have to understand, see, the first manifestation of Elohim when he manifested, see, within his creation, see, going all the way back, see, to right here, is that Elohim had manifested himself, see, as, see, an angel. Yeah. See? Because we understand that pertaining to uh, the um, promise, see, pertaining to uh, Father Abraham, see, and we come right here, see, it says that Yahweh Elohim has stayed his aunt. You understand what I'm saying? And said unto uh, Father Abraham that he sees that you fear Elohim to where you were getting ready to sacrifice your only begotten son. And so therefore, this is the manifestation, see, that Yahweh Elohim had manifested himself in, see? And what the whole, what everybody does not understand, and I'm talking about the theologians, I'm talking about, about the ministers and doctors that's within the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, that what's happening right now is, is that Yahweh Elohim have to manifest himself pertaining to how the creation came forth. So therefore, his first, his first, let me explain. Uh -huh. Huh? Oh, sorry. That's oh, okay. No. Let me show you what I mean. Because if I'm if I'm sharing with you that Yahweh Elohim had manifested himself as an angel, see, it's because that his first creation was the angelic creation. You understand? So therefore, mm -hmm. since the angelic creation was the first creation to come into existence, this is the reason why that Yahweh Elohim had manifested himself as an angel when he had manifested himself to his forefathers up until the time, see, up until the time until we got here. So therefore, Moses' first encounter with Yahweh Elohim, he had manifested himself as an angel. But at the mm -hmm. same time, see, we know, based upon what we learned from our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, that that was no more than Yahshua, the son of Nun, astral projected himself from down here within Egypt to Moses here. And this is how Moses knew, see, what Yahshua, the son of Nun, looked like once he got back down here within the land of Egypt. The angel also, which was Elohim, told Moses right here, he says that your brother is coming to meet you and he will be glad to see you when he sees you. You understand? Because we have to understand that pertaining to what happened in the beginning, when we go all the way back and we're looking at the principles of what manifested, that when we see Moses, see tending to the sheep. You understand what I'm saying? That's manifesting right here. That we have to go back here, see, in the antediluvian age and see two brothers manifesting in the field with sheep. See? Uh, okay. Okay? Yeah. Can, the, the scriptures cannot err. You understand what I'm no. saying? The scriptures mm -hmm. cannot be broken. So this yeah. is the reason why, and this is the explanation, the reason why Moses was where he was. You understand what I'm saying? So that these events can reoccur pertaining to Yahweh Elohim's purpose. You understand what I'm saying? And so, yeah, therefore, it was? And so therefore, when we see how the older brother, see, had killed the younger brother, see, on this particular instance, it shows forth how Yahweh said that when your brother see you, that he shall be glad to see you at this particular time. And so this is the explanation to reason why that when we go back in scripture to just showing the reason why, you see what I'm saying, that each, each individual that was manifesting at, this, at that particular time that Yahweh had chose them to manifest his purpose, see, that each and every individual who Yahweh Elohim has chosen have to manifest the principles that had manifest previously, see, going all the way back to the angelic and the physical creation. It cannot error. It cannot de detour from what has already had manifested previously. You understand? So this is the reason why that when we go back and we look at the things that had happened within the scriptures, see, and that's the reason why that I say that when you see Moses that has manifested himself right down here, 
see, within the land of Egypt. Now here, we see that before he came down to the land of Egypt, after he fled out, that he is manifesting within white, showing forth that he is the son of Elohim, okay? And so right after he seen the transfiguration and his brother met him, see, he came down here to the land of Egypt and see, now we see how he's in turquoise, see? Because we understand that Moses is up under the covenant of circumcision. And I told you that Moses did not circumcise his two sons, but his wife circumcised his son and threw uh, the, the foreskin at his feet, which allowed Moses to be a bloody husband. So now we have the children of uh, Moses down here amongst the children of Israel with the circum circumcised sons so that they could partake of the Passover. That was the reason why that his sons were circumcised. And you have to understand that the Ethiopian woman who Moses had married, his that her father was the high priest of Midian. So therefore she knew the laws of cleanliness and she knew the laws of circumcision because she knew that her husband was circumcised. See, so therefore all these things must play a part and they must recapitulate themselves. This is the mm -hmm. reason why that when we come here, we understand that father Abraham, see, when he was bearing Isaac, see, that he had to manifest the, the um, the origin of circumcision because we understand that he was circumcised at 100 years old you understand what i'm saying this is the reason why that we see father abraham here by having on purple because by the purple is showing forth that he received the promise or the promised blessing see from what which manifested with noah coming over from the antediluvian age to the post-diluvian age okay now we understand that that um, Abraham was one that was said that came from the other side of the flood. We understand that based upon the language that Abraham spoke based upon what happened here, see? By Yahweh Elohim dividing the languages, okay? So therefore, from on the other side of the flood all the way down, it says that Abraham spoke Hebrew just like how Noah spoke Hebrew. So this is how that we, we take Abraham from being over here in the post diluvian age and bring him from the anti-Diluvian ages because of the language which was being spoke. So here when we see Abraham, which is showing forth how that this is the beginning of circumcision manifesting right here, is the same explanation to where we go back and we see how that we have Moses See, manifesting himself here within turquoise because it says that when he told Moses that he was the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it says that Moses hid his face from the presence of Elohim. You understand what I'm saying? Now, it said that he hid his face. Why did he hide his face? You understand what I'm saying? Because what happens is, is that we have to go back and show forth the principles of how that the man and the woman was in the garden and they hid and themselves. Hid they hid themselves from Yahweh walking in the garden. You understand? Yeah. So this is the reason why Moses hid him face, hid his face was because Adam and Eve hid themselves from Yahweh Elohim once they partook, see, of the tree of knowledge of good and of evil. And they put fig leaves around themselves and they went and they hid themselves. So now we come back, see, to where Moses, see, is coming to this tree and presenting himself before Yahweh. And it says that he hid his face. You understand what I'm saying? It's because Adam yeah. and Eve hid themselves amongst the trees. You understand? So therefore, like I said, I go back and I'm showing you how that the um, direction and perception exam is going back and we are picking up these same principles, see, that happen, see, in the creative age. And we see clearly how they are manifesting within the physical. And now we're going all the way back and we're bringing these principles all the way out to show you how that they are remanifesting right out here. Okay, with Moses, all right? So now when we get down here, see? Um, and we get down here uh, in the land of Egypt. Now mm -hmm. what's getting ready to manifest right now, see, is that the manifestation is getting ready to change, but the principle is getting ready to remain the same. Because see, now we are coming from the holy place to where Yahweh Elohim had made himself known unto Moses, and now we right back down here, see, within the outer court. OK. And so now when Moses gets down here, see, with his brother, see, uh, Aaron, this is when he sees Yahshua, the son of Nun, for the first time. OK. And so this is the reason why that when he is talking to Yahshua, the son of Nun, we have to understand that at this particular time, that the same power signs that he got right out here, see, at the burning bush, you understand what I'm saying? That 
Now he got the confirmation of who he got him from because now he knew who he was looking at when he was here because of, of the astral projection of Yahshua. So now when we are down here, it goes back to show forth how that when we come back and we look within the scriptures, see, that it's allowing us to be able to understand the principles which are manifesting right here with Enoch, okay? Because now um, we understand that Yahshua, the son of Nun, is manifesting the same principles as Adam, being brought on the scene as a full grown man. You understand what I'm saying? And now we have Yahshua, the son of Nun, see, manifesting himself down here within the land of Egypt as a full grown man, see? Mm -hmm. Okay, because why? Because Adam, when he was created from the dust of the ground, was placed within the Garden of Eden. He was a full grown man. Now we have to understand the principles of which are manifesting right down here, because see, this is the first heaven. Okay. Yeah. Because the scripture says the first in the first heaven and earth passed away and there was no more sea. So now you have to understand that we are in the first heaven and we have to pick up these principles to show forth how that the creation was manifesting within fruition with the man manifesting there within his wife before the transgression. So this is the reason why that we have to come all the way back here and then we see Yahshua, see the son of none manifesting himself as a full grown man. Okay. So yeah. now what else is getting ready, what else is manifesting simultaneously is, is that the same thing that had manifested here, see with Enoch, and Enoch is a recapitulation to what's manifesting with Moses down within the land of Egypt. Because I told you that all the people here, see, were going to the city of Enoch. You understand what I'm saying? Because yeah. it was, like I said, it was the first heaven and the first earth. You understand what I'm saying? And this was the apostasy, which we understand that this, that, that Cain duplicated what had manifested right here within the Garden of Eden and allowed it to manifest within the city of Enoch and took all of the things of the earth plane. You understand what I'm saying? Because he was the one who tilled the ground and planted his garden right out here within the city of Enoch to where Enoch, the city of Enoch was very plentiful, just like how it was within the Garden of Eden. So therefore, if we go back and we apply the same principles to when we say that this was the first heaven, we understand that Egypt was very, very beautiful and plentiful before the 10 devastating plagues of Yahweh Elohim, which allowed Egypt to manifest and look like how it looks today. You understand what I'm saying? And so therefore, we have to understand, look at this, the city of Enoch, and then we have Egypt, Enoch, <laughs> Egypt. OK, so therefore, the same principles which had manifested within the city of Enoch must manifest down here. See, within the land of Egypt, see, up under Pharaoh, see, of the 18th dynasty. Now, therefore, when we say the 18th dynasty, we take the numbers that will add up to 18. OK, and so therefore, we know that if we go six, 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 three times six, you understand what I'm saying, is 18. And so therefore, that is showing forth how that Pharaoh of the 18th dynasty was no more than the satanic creature or the satanic spirit manifested within a physical man, just how when we go back and see how the spiritual immersion pertaining to what happened in Cain down here within, see, uh, of the court roundabout of this particular plate, okay? Yeah. The principles must run all the way through, okay? And so now we see how this is the most holy place, holy place in the court roundabout, Therefore, we come here, most holy place, holy place, court roundabout. The same principles must recapitulate themselves all the way through. Everything must manifest themselves over and over and over again. So now we understand how we have Pharaoh of the 18th dynasty manifesting himself right down here. And so therefore, we see how Moses, see, goes in unto, see, the king. You understand what I'm saying? And then Moses show forth his power signs unto the king. You understand? So now when we come here, see, we got to understand that Moses had to go to the 12 tribes of the children of Israel and preach unto them and show forth how Elohim has sent him. Because we have to understand the word, see, that Joseph, when Joseph had manifested himself down here, see, he said that Elohim will surely visit you. So therefore the prophecy must come to pass. You see what I'm saying? Based upon the words, see, that Joseph spoke. 
Now, when we get here, see, and we must go back to this plate here. We have to understand that after Abraham had received the blessing, that Yahweh Elohim had told Father Abraham that his seed must go down into Egypt, see, for some odd 400 years. And that nation, see, that will treat his seed evil, that Yahweh Elohim said that he would judge. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we have to understand that this is the reason why that Yahweh Elohim had came down and manifested himself as Yahshua, the son of Nun. Because just how, when we go back within the scriptures, see, we have to understand that before Yahweh Elohim could destroy this world, see, and I'm talking about the anti-Diluvian age, you understand what I'm saying? That Yahweh was there himself, seeing all the transgression of this particular city. You understand what I'm saying? This is what allowed him to be able to make the judgment, you understand what I'm saying, so that this can occur. And I'm talking about the destruction of this world by water. And we understand that it had to be water because this was the first element that had manifested. When we go back, see, in the beginning here, we see that all these things had took place, see, see, within the first, see, um, periodic table element of H1 or water. All these yeah. things, the angels was created was water. See, and showing you all the way through, see how that when you're looking at these things, how that water was the first manifestation that all these things had happened. And when we go to the scriptures, how it says that the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the deep. You understand what I'm saying? And how darkness was upon the face of the deep. So therefore, we have to understand that if, if, if the scriptures are dictating that in the beginning that it was water, this is the explanation, the reason why that the world had to be <coughs> by water see which is manifesting right here see because the same thing that had manifested within the beginning something has to manifest within the end and this is the end of this particular um dispensation see which manifested by the flood because of what happened within the beginning see so therefore when we come and we look and we further see what is manifesting see down here within egypt See, we can kind of like go back to what happened in the beginning of the scriptures or, or the beginning to be able to understand. So now we see how Yahweh Elohim had manifested himself, see, to Moses down here within the land of Egypt. Then we understand how that the children of Israel, see, going back, see, to these same very principles right here, we understand that by place four, five, and six, okay, pertaining to what had manifested down here in the land of Egypt, we understand that the children of Israel, they, they suffered the first three plagues down here in the land of Egypt. Now we understand why is because of what happened in place four, five, and six, okay? This is the reason why the children of Israel suffered the first three plagues down here in Egypt. And then after the first, the fourth plague, Yahweh Elohim had severed the children of Israel from the Egyptians, okay? And so therefore what happened is, is that the Egyptians suffered the seven other plagues, see? That had manifested right down here within Egypt. We can see that right here, but we got the three that's manifesting here, and then we got the seven that's manifesting here. So therefore when we have the three on this side, it goes back to these three days, see, that had manifested before the first day, that manifested within the realm of eternity, See, which we see that has manifested down here with the children of Israel. And then the seven plagues, you understand what I'm saying? And the seven on the other side pertaining to the seven plagues that the um, Egyptians had to suffer, see, down here because of their disobedience. And every time we have to show you how that Moses had went in and warned Pharaoh every time before a plague had happened and asked Pharaoh, see, to let his people go. So this is to show you how that in the beginning, See, pertaining to what is manifesting right here is to give you the understanding of how this evil satanic creature Lucifer had taken the one third host from heaven. You understand what I'm saying? Because Moses had to go in all those times and say, let my people go. So therefore that is like it unto we understand how when we go to plate number 14 and let us go there for the sake of understanding.
And we see how that we have all these angels, see, that are manifesting themselves within the bounds, you see what I'm saying, or this eternal darkness, see, awaiting the day of judgment, see. This is just how when Moses had went in unto Pharaoh and said to let my people go, this is to show forth how Satan has his one third host bound within darkness. See, mm -hmm. the principles, the manifestation will change, but the principle will remain the same. Mm -hmm. See, so now when we go right back out, see here, and we go back to our, <clears throat> please forgive me for the disarray. So when we go back, see here, so furtherly look at the things that had manifested themselves pertaining to when the children of Israel were down here, see, because now what's getting ready to happen is, is that pertaining to the children of Israel, getting ready to come up out here, see, we're showing you everything that happened previously. So now when we're getting up to the last plague, see, so where Yahweh is getting ready to manifest darkness over the whole land, see, of Egypt, see, which is going right up here to where we understand that this is a manifestation of the lamb being slain from the foundation of the world. And now how whole Egypt has turned black. We see that the children of Israel have to do what? Take out a lamb and slay it. Because this is also proof within the physical realm of how that here, when we come to plate C, which is plate five, is also showing forth how we said that this is the lamb being slain before the foundation of the world. And so therefore, when we come down here and we see them getting ready to come up out of the land of Egypt and the Egypt is in stricken darkness, what they must do is take out a lamb and must slay it just like how the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. And this is also the explanation to reason why that when Yahshua was upon the cross, that it turned dark from the third to the ninth hour, picking up the yeah. same principles. You understand? See, mm -hmm. because they cannot see the, the scriptures cannot be broken. And so no. therefore, so therefore, we have to go back to the ontological state of perfection and pick up the principles that happened in the beginning before before time even began. And see, even these things that are manifesting right here is within the realm of eternity because time has not even started yet. Because we know that Yahweh is preparing them to come up out of here because once they go from here to here, it will be the first of April. And Yahweh said that this shall be the first day of the month and of the year unto you because this is the establishment of the lunar calendar. OK, and so Yahweh Elohim is taking them out of the realm of eternity and allowing the children of Israel to manifest themselves within time right here. So therefore, we've seen a transition from the first heaven and the first earth, which has passed away and there being no more sea and from them coming from the first state of heaven to the second state of heaven. And then with that, allowing them to manifest within the physical creation at the same time, showing you how that when you look here. And we look at these principles, how the angelic must take itself within the physical. We're showing forth how that this is the realm of eternity before the first day of the month, before the first day of the year. It is showing forth how the angelic is taking his residence within the physical because there is no time. It is in the realm of eternity. And even though physical things are manifesting, you have to understand that it is still manifesting the angelic creation and not the physical. Because now that physical time is taking its residence, now physical things is getting ready to manifest pertaining to time and picking up a denotation when the Messiah must come in on the fourth day or the 4,000 year of time. So this is how that all these things are going back and remanifesting themselves all the way from the angelic and manifesting themselves within the physical. So as we, uh, as we continue, see, to manifest and to move along, what we have to do is, is that when we see how this is manifesting the first heaven and the first earth, you understand what I'm saying? We have to go all the way back because now a very, very important fundamental principle, C, must take its effect. And so therefore what happens is, is that what we must do is come back here. So now when we come here and we see how that the man was formed, see, of the dust of the ground, mm -hmm. see? which is manifesting right here, okay? And then Yahweh Elohim said that let us make man in our image and in our likeness, okay? Yeah. So now when we come back here, see, it's easy for us to understand 
how Yahshua, the son of Nun, must be 30 years old, see, just like Adam was down here. Okay? And so then when we come right out here, see, to the holy place, see, now what's getting ready to happen is, is the same principles that we have, see, with Enoch, see, we're getting ready to have with Moses and um, uh, uh, Moses and Yahshua, the son of Nun. Because what's getting ready to happen now is, is that now when we have Yahshua and Moses, see, what's happening is, is we're showing forth how that Yahweh Elohim has a man Moses in his image and his likeness. Because it says that Moses was meek in all his house, just like how Yahshua was when he came in as the Messiah. So mm -hmm. therefore, we have to go back over these same fundamental principles and lay the man down, see, upon the top of the mountain. Because, see, when we come here, we have to see how the man was created from a mountain. See, right here. And then we have the cloud above the man's head. And then we go here and then we see how the man is in the mountain and then the cloud being around him. It must pick up the same principles so that you can understand what you're seeing and know that based upon what you're seeing pertaining to the migratory trek chart are the same things that happen back within the realm of eternity. And this is the reason why, see, that Moses did not understand. You understand what I'm saying? That Elohim had manifested himself in this shape and form because I told you that the first creation, which manifested as the angelic creation, Elohim had to manifest to himself as Moses because this is how, in this angelic form, is how that Elohim manifested himself to, to uh, Noah. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all the parches until it came to Moses. So now mm -hmm. Moses seeing this shape and form. So now what's getting ready to happen is that now there's not going to be no more wings. Now he's getting ready to show him the true image and likeness. You understand what I'm saying? Of the creator based upon what he made the man out of. So this is the reason why that when the man had to lay down upon the mountain, just like how it was when he was being created here. See? Being created out of a mountain and then a cloud being upon him. See, and then we got that dove that's manifesting right there as the breath of life. Then the same thing must come back right wow. here. See, and show forth the man laying down. There's the cloud. And then he's showing him that dove, see, which moved upon the face of the deep. You understand what I'm saying? To show forth the same principles. And so now Moses is seeing the way that the creation had came into existence. But the only thing of it here that when Moses see how the man is made in the image and likeness of Elohim, that Moses is beholding the true image and likeness of Elohim manifesting right here to where Moses understands now that man is made in the image and likeness of of Yahweh. And that's how you come about to see what happened in Genesis, the first and second chapter, because until then, man has not written based upon how Yahweh had manifested himself unto him. And so therefore, this gave Moses the understanding once he came up here and seen Elohim and then seen the creation come into existence. It took Moses all the way back up to the second trip for Moses to see this, to understand that man was made in the image and likeness of Elohim instead of this angelic creature here. You understand what I'm saying? And so therefore, when Moses, when Yahweh Elohim took Moses up there and showed him everything that happened, based upon what happened with man and the fall of man all the way up until Moses' birth, then Moses understood all the things that happened based upon he wrote about that happened with, with um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, what happened with Adam in the garden, what happened with Noah. Now Moses has an understanding. See, because Moses went up onto this mountain how many times? Three. Let us go back and let us see the reason why. And Yahweh was showing him how to officiate in the greater, more perfect tabernacle, because Yahweh was the teacher. That's correct. And so therefore, now Moses understood that when he was here, you understand what I'm saying? He was born down here, and he went up here, he came back yeah. down, and he resurrected right back up here. And this is where yeah. Moses died. You understand what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. the reason why that was, was because of the promise that had manifested here, and see, and came all the way down, because now you have Abraham, Isaac, and you have Jacob. You understand what I'm saying? And we understand that this being likened unto Abraham, being the father showing forth the son within his bosom, it shows us right here. And then this likened unto being unto Isaac, because Isaac was the one that's getting ready to be sacrificed upon Mount Moriah, which is in the most holy place. 
You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That takes us here to where we understand the reason why this temple had to be built up here. You understand what I'm saying? Because when we come down through the ages and the dispensations of time, we have to go back and see that where this happened at, which is manifesting right here when the angel has stayed uh, Abraham's hand, that this was where the temple was built. Why? Because this is where the promise was given. You understand what I'm saying? Pertaining to how that the children of Israel, see, should be evilly entreated for some odd 400 years and then come back up into this place to receive their inheritance. You understand what I'm saying? And Yahweh Elohim have preserved the land all the way up until that time and told them that the sins of the Am uh, of the Amorites have, have not yet, you know what I'm saying, matured for them to uh, eliminate the inhabitants who was there for Abraham's seed for the land. See, and that's the reason why that the spies, see, gave an evil report. You understand what I'm saying? When Moses has sent them over here to spy out the land. You see what I'm saying? And this is show forth the reason why these certain things happen because it had to be at an appointed time for the children of Israel to go over here to and through the divided waters of the river Jordan, see, so that the time that when they do go over here could be based upon the time, see, and the time frame when the man and the woman was extirpated up out of the garden. So now when the man comes back into the garden, he comes back with the children because here the law said that the woman cannot be saved except by childbearing. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So therefore, when Yahshua, the son of Nun, comes back, see, right back out here to Canaan land, see, which was likened unto the Garden of Eden, and see Michael still being on his post, you understand what I'm saying? When Remember, Yahshua, the son of Nun, had to do what? Circumcise 144,000 Israelites, because when they was out here, see, within the wilderness of Sinai for 40 years, they circumcised not. Because every time that the cloud moved, they had to break this down and move with the cloud. So therefore, mm -hmm. they didn't circumcise when they was out here. So when they crossed to and through the divided waters of the River Jordan, see, now the law of circumcision, you understand what I'm saying, based upon what happened, see, with Father Abraham right up here, see, had to happen up here in the most holy place. It could not happen in the holy place. You understand what I'm saying? Which was mm -hmm. out here. It had to happen back where circumcision was given, back up here in the most holy place. You understand what I'm saying? Because what happens is that when we go back over there to Romans and we're showing you that it says over there that one is not a Jew, which is one outwardly of the flesh, but one is a Jew inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart and not in the flesh. You understand? Yeah. And where do you see the hearts? Here in the most holy place. So this is the reason why that when we come back here, see, that Moses, I'm not, I'm sorry, not Moses, but Yahshua, the son of Nun, had to circumcise, see, the children of Israel, the new birth, see, that crossed over, which is the 144,000, they had to be circumcised up here, see, because the scriptures cannot be broken. You understand? So this is the reason why that we continually go over and over and over, see these principles, to see how that they apply here. And so therefore we understand that Moses being the lawgiver, you understand what I'm saying? See, when we yeah. come back here, oops, that's not a good one. <clears throat> Give me one second, please. Oh, no That's why when we was looking at this picture, when Yahshua has his hand, see, over Moses, you understand what I'm saying? That this is the same one that showed Moses, see, everything that he's seen up within the mountain. You understand? That's why they're up here within the transfiguration, right here, see? And so everything that we just got through showing you that Moses has been through, you know what I'm saying? And everything that is taking place, see, is that is this one. And Moses, mm -hmm. when Moses got taken up, see right here, and seeing who he was, or Yahshua the son of Nun, he bared witness to the fact that this was the one, was the same one here, which was the same one here. And was wow. the same one, you understand what I'm saying? See, that was all the way back, that done all the things with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, his forefathers. 
You understand what I'm saying? And that's what allowed Moses to be a faithful witness. You understand what I'm saying? And so therefore, when Moses was up here and seeing the things, you see what I'm saying, that he seen, he was able to write them within the book to be able to substantiate that he was a faithful witness based upon, you see what I'm saying, all the things that, that Elohim did. And Elohim showed this to Moses, see, his second trip when he was up in the mountain. You understand what I'm saying? So, but see now, see, that just led us up to one more thing. So now I must go back and show you, see, that when we were here and I showed you how that when you have Yahshua here showing forth that he is alpha. And I showed you here that this is Yahshua showing forth that he is omega. Yeah. How the law had to manifest right here because that's like unto the woman being clothed in the sun. And you notice that they are all within the cloud because Yahshua had to fulfill both principles. Now, if Yahshua had to fulfill the principle of, of, of him, See, being translated into the kingdom. That's why when you get here, Yahshua's hands is over both of them because he fulfilled the principles of Elijah and he fulfilled everything that was consisting of the law. That's why you see Yahshua here with his hands over this angel and over this angel because he fulfilled the law and the prophets. This being the law and then this being the prophet. You understand what I'm saying? The first prophet up under the, uh, being the last prophet up under the law. You understand what I'm saying? See, and I'm talking about uh, John the Baptist. And then you got Moses being the first prophet and the last prophet. So you got your first and last here. You got him being your first and last or your beginning and end, which is manifesting right here. You understand? So this is how you some saying Moses is, is um, that Yahshua is fulfilling all these principles. Now, the, the, the main important thing that I really wanted to go over, see, uh -huh. when I was talking about how we have uh, Yahshua's hand, okay, manifesting, uh, up there, just like how it was manifesting. And I told you that, um, I think this plate right here shows a little bit more better. Now here we got Yahshua showing forth this hand that he got up here, right? And I shared with you that the, uh, another reason, the reason why that he has that hand out there was because he had to go back and fulfill the principles of that same hand that, that Satan had touched the fiery stones. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now the commandment was not to touch. Okay, just like how the commandment was here. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So therefore, if the commandment was for him not to touch, which is manifesting here, which manifested the uh, angelic transgression, which allowed the creation to come down. So here we see how we got Yahshua showing forth the same hand. You understand what I'm saying? Which corrected, you understand what I'm saying, the transgression. See, which had manifested here. Now, how we prove that, see, is how Yahweh Elohim have proved that into the whole entire world. See? Yeah. And how that was, was this. This is the reason why that when we come right back up here, see, to this, see, that, that remember how that the man and the woman were naked and they were not, in, not ashamed. Remember that? Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and then when we come all the way down, and hold on, I got to do it just like this so you can understand the principle that I'm trying to convey. Now, I said that the woman and the man was in the garden and not ashamed, right? Yes. And that's what happened in the uh, creative, in the creative age. And so, therefore, when we come down to the, uh, to the, uh, after we come down uh, to the uh, antediluvian age, you understand what I'm saying? That Yahweh Elohim have put a uh, coat of skin upon the man and the woman. You understand what I'm saying? So in the uh -huh. anti age, their nakedness was covered up. So yeah. here, uh, when we look at um, what's happened in the, uh, in the beginning of the uh, post diluvian age, we, we run across that same scenario again. Because mm -hmm. I shared with you that here we see um, Noah in blue showing forth that he was translated from one world over to the next world. And then we have his wife manifested in white to show forth that she was very fair. Okay? Yeah. So if he, was, if he was drunken with his wine and he was with his wife inside of his tent, because they go to the tent up there, they got drunk and they went into the tent. And that's the tent manifesting up there. So then here come his son being curious. And then he goes in inside the tent and then he says he sees his father's nakedness and then goes back and tells his two brothers. And then his brothers come in uh, and then cover him with the sheep. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. now it's showing forth how that they're covering up the father's nakedness. You understand what I'm saying? So... Yeah. Before we had the man and woman naked and not ashamed. And then here, you understand what I'm saying? That he went in and seen his father's nakedness, which was his wife. 
You go over there to Leviticus to be able to see the principles of your father's nakedness and then the mother's nakedness to understand what took place here. But here, you understand what I'm saying? Because we have children in the class. We did not want to show a sexual picture. But here we're showing a man see naked and his son's coming to cover him up. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now, that being said, that is the explanation on when we come here. When Yahweh Elohim told Moses that he could only see his hindered parts or his back parts is because they came in backwards. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So this is why when Yahweh Elohim was up on the mountain, he covered Moses' eyes and only showed him his hindered parts. And to show Moses that he was the one, you understand what I'm saying, that was back there in the beginning, you understand what I'm saying, to manifest himself as the angel that sat upon, upon the mercy seat, that Yahweh Elohim writes the Ten Commandment laws with his finger. Mm -hmm. Okay, why is that? Because you have to understand that he touched with his fingers here, which was wrong. Okay? And then to show forth how that when we see Yahshua the Messiah, see, and he's upon this mountain here, that's the same hand that he wrote in, in the sand, you understand what I'm saying, the laws, when they had brought Mary Magdalene to him. You understand what I'm saying? And he said, he without sin cast the first stone. You understand what I'm saying? When they brought Mary Magdalene to him, and he wrote the in the sand two times. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Why did he write yeah. it in the sand two times? One for the law, one for the testimony. If it does not go according to these two faithful witnesses, it is because there is no light, which is Joshua, in them. You understand what I'm saying? And therefore to show, because if Moses is identifying him and he says that let us make a tabernacle, one for thee, one for Moses and one for Elijah, and it's showing forth that he is right here, then when you go all the way back, based upon the principles that we have said, see, and we see how Elohim had wrote the laws, you understand what I'm saying, in the tables of stone and gave them to Moses, it shows Moses four the first stone. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? And look, it says that Elohim had to write on these, had to write this law twice because the first yeah. tables of stone Moses threw down and break, which is likely to the first, to the first covenant that he gave unto them and they break. That's the reason why the first tables of stone were broken. And then Yahweh Elohim told Moses to hew up, you see what I'm saying, two stones like unto the first. And Yahweh Elohim said that he would write again on those two tables of stone like he done unto the first. This is the reason why Yahshua had to write two times, you understand what I'm saying, within the dirt. You see what I'm saying? But then, but then again, and show that he was the one who wrote the spiritual law and that he was the fulfiller of the law. You understand what I'm saying? And to prove that when he did it and he's shown him for himself right here and wrote in the tables of stone to show forth that he was the angel Gabriel that sat upon the Ark of the Covenant and manifested himself right here. All the way back. See? And all it does is just go back and just validate itself. See? How the scriptures overturn and overturn and overturn and overturn. And overturn, and overturn. And overturn. You understand what I'm saying? So therefore, Yahweh Elohim takes Moses up into the mountain. You understand what I'm saying? Writes upon the tables of stone and then give it to him and tell him, make me a sanctuary. You understand what I'm saying? So that I may dwell among them. Now he's telling Moses, after he then went up and received the tables of stone, see, to make him a sanctuary so that he may dwell among them. Why is that? Because it is going back all the way back now. Because, see, based upon, see, the laws that was established pertaining to the spiritual laws that was preached, see, by Enoch, all the way up into the warning to where Noah was warning, you understand what I'm saying, everybody saying, hey, you know what I mean, Yahweh Elohim is going to destroy the world, you know what I'm saying, by, uh, by water. See, the same principles have to recapitulate themselves. Yep. See? So now, Noah had to build his ark. See? Mm -hmm. Construction started here. They got everything, like I said, they got everything they needed up out of Egypt to build this tabernacle right out here. Here is showing forth how that they got all the things that they needed to, with, within the court roundabout from, from the substance of Mother Earth to be able to establish to build this ark. So now, once they built this ark, you understand what I'm saying? This was a sanctuary of safety that all life form inhabited within, okay? So now we got to understand that Yahweh Elohim is life. And so therefore Yahweh Elohim told the man to build a structure. You understand what I'm saying? Because of the law of which Yahweh said by him getting ready to destroy 
the world, you see what I'm saying, by water is remanifesting by them coming to and through the water, just yeah. like this. You understand what I'm saying? They had to go to and through the water, just like how the manifestation had to manifest with the boat. And then now they're out here and they have to build a structure, just like how they built this structure. So now everything is remanifesting. You understand what I'm saying? So therefore, the children of Israel were out here for 40 years. It rained 40 days and 40 nights. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All the principles have to remanifest themselves. You understand what I'm saying? Based upon what happened in the beginning, so shall it happen within the end. And so shall it happen within present tense. You understand what I'm saying? Before we can even denote the end, we're seeing what's manifest before the end manifests because Yahweh's Elohim purpose overturns and overturns itself. So now we see how we got the construction the, of Noah's Ark. You understand what I'm saying? And then them going over into the post-Diluvian age. And so now what happens is, is that Yahweh Elohim made them build him a sanctuary so that he can dwell amongst them. And then after the 40 days and 40 nights or after the 40 years, what happens? It says that they go and they set this particular tabernacle pattern up here on Mount Zion, just how, see, this ark went and sat up here on Mount Ararat. You understand yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. The scriptures cannot be broken. So just how this threefold, you, you know what I'm saying, construction of this ark, see, has started from here, from its construction within the court roundabout, manifested itself within the holy place being completed, and then they enter in up here, it's still showing forth how when that ark, see, based upon the 40 days and 40 nights had sat right up here on Mount Ararat, it's the same principles on how that the children of Israel had to manifest themselves right out here for 40 years. And then after, go to and through the divided waters of the River Jordan and then set the tabernacle right up here on Mount Zion, picking up the same principles of what happened with the ark. You understand what I'm saying? And so therefore, when we look at that this, and then how it said that he was drunk from his wine, then it shows forth how that we have the people who did not believe the report based upon what happened here, see, with uh, Noah's Ark, and how Yahweh had put this covenant upon the sky saying that he would never destroy the world by water again. See, this was the spoken word, our spirit law, see, which Yahweh has spoken. And so therefore we have these individuals that are manifested on the Tower of Babel who built this because they didn't believe the report or the covenant that he gave with man and beast. And so this is the reason why we understand it as being a satanic foundation in Yahweh speaking down, you know what I'm saying, from this tower. So now we understand that I told you that this was the origin, see, of what happened, see here, when Yahweh Elohim has spoke down unto the children of Israel. This is not the first time that Yahweh Elohim has spoke down unto a people. You understand what I'm saying? Because he spoke down here. And when Yahweh spoke down to the people here, he spoke Hebrew. When he confounded the languages, he spoke Hebrew here. Yeah. When he spoke down to the people here, he spoke Hebrew here. Why? Because he brewed them and these were Hebrews. You understand what I'm saying? And so now we understand that when he confounded and he split the languages, you understand what I'm saying? He divided the languages here. See, what did he do? He says he divided the sheep from the goat right here. You understand what I'm saying? So now we got the same principles going on. Now it's a cloud, see, by fire, because here it was a cloud by day. Here it's, a, it's fire by night. And it's picking up the same principles, you understand what I'm saying, which had manifested, you see what I'm saying? See, within uh, uh, the, um, the post-Diluvian age, in the beginning of the post-Diluvian age. So now these same very principles is manifesting again right out here, see, in the wilderness of Sinai with the children of Israel after the promise, see, was given to Father Abraham. And so therefore now the sons, you see what I'm saying, of Abraham are manifesting the children of Israel like an unto the sons of Elohim, you understand what I'm saying, are the angels which were in heaven. You see what I'm saying? So therefore, all these principles must go back and recapitulate and remanifest themselves so that we can see, you understand what I'm saying, and know for an assurity because of the repetitiousness that it is Yahweh Elohim manifesting his purpose within the physical creation or the earth plane. And the principles are perpetual. And so this is the reason why that we go back and we apply all the principles over and over and over again 
so that you can understand everything that has manifested themselves up until the time that Moses goes up within the mountain. Yahweh Elohim plays all these things back to him, and then he is able to write them, which we understand to be the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, you know what I'm saying? Exodus, Leviticus, you know what I'm saying? Numbers and then Deuteronomy. You see what I'm saying? And so now we can see that based upon it, everything that Yahweh Elohim had took Moses through, we see that not only did Moses physically live through him, but these are the things that Moses wrote about that took place, you understand what I'm saying, back within the realm of eternity or from the time of the, crea the creative age, see, to the antediluvian age, all the way up until the post-diluvian age, you understand what I'm saying, to where we understand the things that are taking place right out here, which is no more, you understand what I'm saying, but the schoolmaster to lead us up unto the Messiah. You see? Yep. So this uh -huh. is the reason why that we have to go back and we have to pick up all these principles, you understand what I'm saying, that had manifested all the way back here and show forth how they lead back up into the Messiah and the Messiah being our schoolmaster. Because, see, the only thing that had manifested right here, see, was that Yahweh Elohim had took Moses, you see what I'm saying, and showed him everything that had manifested. So now we understand the reason why Moses could not see Yahweh Elohim's face, because he says, can no man see my face and live? Could nobody see, you know what I'm saying, the front parts of Yahweh Elohim? He had to see the hinder parts. You see what I'm saying? Until, why is that? Nobody understands that. Nobody understands that. And the only way that I can explain that to you is this way. And I'm going to say it to you just like this so that you can understand. Okay. That takes us all the way back here. All the way back here to the garden. Now, I shared with you and I asked you why wasn't it that Lucifer went up to, to Adam instead of going to Eve? You understand what I'm saying? Oh, that's what it that's what it boils down to and uh -huh. see and see let me share this with you too and i'm just gonna make it i'm just gonna make it plain all the way throughout the ages and dispensations of time let me share this with you satan could not go up unto yashua see he couldn't go up to yashua see yeah in the creative age the antediluvian age, and the only reason why that he was able to go up into Yahshua on the post-diluvian age, do you know why? Mm, not really. Okay. Okay. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with not knowing. You know, I'm going to tell you the answers. And okay. and, and and Doc, uh, when I ask you a question and you don't know the answer, don't look at it as you being insufficient. Or, 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 and I'm gonna say it like this, don't think that you're dumb or you're stupid because you're not, okay? Don't nobody know these answers, you understand what I'm saying? To the purpose, unless it is him whose purpose it is. You understand what I'm saying? Because he's the only one that can ask the questions and then give the answers. Now, the only reason why that Satan couldn't go to Adam because Adam was formed out of the dust of the ground and was a manifestation of the father, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only reason why that Satan could come unto Yahshua is because Yahshua was born and came through the loins of a woman. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now that Yahshua came through the loins of a woman, you understand what I'm saying? Because you have to understand that if the creation was subjected unto vanity unwillingly, okay, mm -hmm. uh, you got to understand that the man... You understand what I'm saying? Even though that he came from Virgin Mother Earth was a manifestation of the Father. So therefore, you know what I'm saying? He really wasn't subjected unto his creation until he came through the loins of a woman. And so once he came through the loins of, of Virgin uh, 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 Miriam, you understand what I'm saying? This was allow Satan to be able to confront Yahshua. Because if he didn't come through the flesh or was born through 60 generations of the flesh, Lucifer could not ever confront him. And so this is why we have Lucifer here. And look what color, look, look at his colors. They're red. Why? Because of the transgression that happened in the garden. And we see how when he comes up out of the garden, he's red. Yep, he's red. Yeah. Because he's been judged. 
He's been judged. And then we got Yahshua with purple on because Yahshua is the promise. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. See, he's the promise. See? And so therefore, you see how he's on the same side that he was when he done the transgression, right? Yeah. See? But he's in red. He can't, he can't appear as an angel of light because the sun is on the scene. And then Yahshua said that, he says, if you bow down and worship me, he says, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the earth. And Yahshua said that, that, that Yahweh thy Elohim is the only one that you shall worship and him only shall you worship. You understand what I'm saying? And yeah. so therefore it showed forth how he was judged again. You understand what I'm saying? And it says that Satan took him up three times. Why three times? Because we have to go back right here because this was the origin of where it happened at. See, yeah. this was the origin. And all this is, is a recapitulation of what happened right here. See, that's all this is, that's all it is. And so now you got both sons, you understand what I'm saying? Who are spirit taking their residence, you understand what I'm saying? And showing forth a recapitulation of what had manifested within the beginning. You see what I'm saying? But the only difference is, is that he's manifesting as the God of this world and he's talking to the creator of this world. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. See? And so this is why he says that he, if he bowed down and worshiped him, he would give him all the kingdoms of the earth. But he was the one who created them. You understand what I'm saying? So why would the one who created created them bow down to the one he let him run? You understand what I'm saying? Because he's nothing but a hireling. You see what I'm saying? See? Yeah. So now it comes all the way back down and show you what manifested right here based upon everything that had manifested here, see, within the realm of eternity, see? And so this is why that when we look at all these principles, see, and then we come back here, see, to the migratory trek chart, see, we can understand these things a little bit more clearly. You see what I'm saying? The reason why Yahweh Elohim done the things that he did. The whole world doesn't really understand the reason why Yahweh Elohim have wrote in these tables of stone. You see what I'm saying? To give to Moses to put within the apothecary. You understand what I'm saying? And it was in the shape and form of a heart and had to be put in the Ark of the Covenant because, as I said, it's no more but to show you what had happened within the spirit. To show you what had happened within the spirit materialized in the physical creation because um, matter is spirit materialized. And all Yahweh Elohim has been doing is giving us an, expla an explanation of his purpose throughout the ages and dispensations based upon the things that happen in the day. In the day, yeah. The day of eternity. You understand? And so this is the reason why that he chose seven ages and dispensations to tell his story, which happens in the day. And so therefore, this is the reason why and the explanation why that we have the days of creation and everything that manifested right up here is the explanation of everything that took place below. And that's why I had gave you the statement to show forth that this is the overshadowing and that this is the birth underneath, see? And so now, see, that goes back to reason why that I had the scripture reading being read pertaining to show forth how that we had Elijah, the man of Elohim manifest the principles that he did. Now within the scriptures, it show forth how that when we say that the two, that the king sent three groups of 50, this is the reason why. He burnt up the first two, we know why. But then when he said, when he sent the third, he had compassion and he came down and he went with them. You understand what I'm saying? Then when Elijah went with them, See, and see, and let me share this with you again. If when we, when we go to the scriptures and we look back within the realm of eternity and it shows forth that Michael had a flaming sword, okay? And so now we're talking about the man of Elohim, which at this particular time is, it is Elijah. And then we come in here and we're looking at how Elijah manifests himself here and then said that he came in the spirit of John the Baptist and then is likened unto John that was on the Isle of Patmos being the other faithful witness, which is witnessing unto um, Yahshua, see, in his glorified state. You understand what I'm saying? 
Yeah. Elijah is manifesting a principle of Michael who lost not his first estate. You understand that? Mm -hmm. And so therefore, everything that Elijah did, it has something to do with fire. Fire came down, oh. fire came down, down from, from heaven, heaven and, and burnt, burnt the two, two people. people. I mean, burnt the two to two fifties and the two captains, you see what I'm saying, of the king. Oh. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? And then remember, Elijah told the 400 uh, uh, priests of Baal, he says, let's see who's Elohim is Elohim. He says, get a get an altar. He says, yeah. and get two oxen and let's sacrifice to it. He says, but don't put fire upon it. And he says, whichever Elohim or whichever deity who answers in fire, that is the true God of heaven and earth. Remember? Yeah. And so therefore, he told that the 400 um, prophets of Baal, he told them, go ahead, you go first. It says that they, they cried and prophesied for hours and begged for their God to consume the sacrifice and didn't. It says that they started cutting on themselves. And then yeah. it's how Elijah, he mocked him and said, oh, truly, your God must be asleep because he can't hear you. Why don't you cry a little louder, remember? And they cried, they cried louder and louder and cut themselves and, and done everything, and nothing happened. And then mm -hmm. Elijah says, okay. He says, take my sacrifice put upon the altar. And then he told him, he says, drench it with water. Drench it with water. And told him to put water on top of water on top. He says, put water on the wood, put water on the sacrifice, put water on the stones. And then after they did that, it says that Elijah had asked Elohim and Elohim consumed the sacrifice, all the water. It says that he consumed it so much that it was nothing left. You understand? See? Yeah. So therefore, that was your manifestation of fire. To pick up the manifestation of what happened here with Michael and Michael having a flaming sword of fire. So now we're showing forth a son of Elohim manifesting in the flesh the same principles as Michael by the fire, because we, like I said, if you're using the examination and direction exam, I told you that the manifestation will change, but the principle will remain the same. And the principle is fire. Yep. And it's manifesting through a man of Elohim, just like an angel of Elohim. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so this is the reason why that we had that those scriptures picked up to show forth who Elijah was manifesting within the flesh. And that was no more but a personification or a manifestation as Michael. You understand what I'm saying? See? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and look, Elijah never transgressed or done anything wrong and was received up into glory. You understand what I'm saying? Elijah never showed any forms of disobedience. Mm -hmm. Now, his faith got weak when he was in the cave and said that I haven't bowed myself down to Baal. And Yahweh said that I have reserved 7,000 that have not bowed their knee. You understand what I'm saying? He didn't know that. And that's when the ravens were feeding him. You understand what I'm saying? Ravens, huh? Ravens yeah. were feeding him. So that takes us all the way back to what? The ark. When Noah had let out the raven first. And that's the reason why the raven had to feed him. You understand? Oh, Everything yeah. come back and recapitulate itself. Now, remember that the dove came back with an olive leaf on his branch to show Noah that, that the waters was receding. Remember? Mm -hmm. So now we got Elijah hiding in the cave. You understand what I'm saying? And look, look at this. We go over this all the time. Now, Elder tells you that when that raven came up out of the ark that that raven ate on these dead bodies, okay? Mm -hmm. That was the meat that this raven was eating, okay? Yeah. So now I told you that when Elijah was in the caves that this raven was braving Elijah meat to eat. Now you know why. Mm. Yeah. You see, ain't that beautiful? Wow. See, <laughs> hey man, I'm telling you, <laughs> when it's pertaining to these scriptures, man, when it says that it's airtight, man, I'm, I'm talking, talking about, about many scriptures are airtight. Airtight. Yeah. You, you understand, understand what I'm saying? saying? And, and so, so this is the reason why that we go over these principles. You understand what I'm saying? To practice the perception and direction exam to see that everything that is manifesting within Yahweh Elohim's purpose is the same way to show forth how Yahweh Elohim changes not.
And the show forth how he overturned and overturns. So therefore, if a person is not changing, then you know that that's the real deal. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So these are the principles, see, that are re-perpetuating, see, that are manifesting in um, the antediluvian age, that are re-manifesting in the post-diluvian age. Now, see, these are the things that are manifesting in the early part of the post-diluvian age, which I'm reading to you, that is manifesting within the middle part of the post-diluvian age. And now you're seeing where they come from. You yeah. see? Mm-hmm. So this is the beauty of, 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 of these things, to show forth how Yahweh Elohim changed not. Now, it says that after... See, we picked up, see, that um, Elijah is getting ready to be picked up by this whirlwind, okay? Now, Elijah means uh, the father, okay? And then when you get Elisha, Elisha means the same thing as Joshua, is that uh, uh, Elohim is salvation. That's what Elisha means, the same as Joshua or Yahweh is salvation. That's what Elisha means. And so, therefore, it says that uh, um, Elijah stopped um, at the Jericho, Jordan, and one other place. Three places, one, two, three, okay? Mm -hmm. Why was it three places? Because of plates four, five, and six. One, two, three, just like how the high priest had to go up here three times. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then, once they got over here and they crossed the Jordan, every time that they crossed, it says that, it says the sons of the prophet would come to Elijah and says, they're going to take your master today. They're going to come take your master this, today. They said that three times. Then Elijah asked Elisha, he says, what is it that you want me to do for you? He says that I would like a double portion of your spirit, a double portion. Hmm. He says, that's a hard thing. But if you see me leave, it shall be granted unto you. And then you can take my mantle. Now, here's Moses with that stick, which is like unto a mantle. Got to be that stick again. You understand what I'm saying? Moses held, it. Moses held it up here. They went to and through the divided waters of the Red Sea. Now, e e Elijah slapped the waters of the River Jordan with his mantle and the waters parted just like that. And he went, they went to and through. You understand what I'm saying? On dry land. So now after Elijah was taken up by a whirlwind, he said that that mantle hit the ground, you know what I'm saying? With, 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 with his particular, uh, uh, with everything that uh, Elijah had left. And then it says Elisha rent his clothes. Just like how the veil in the, in the temple rent in twain, now you have Elisha renting his clothes, which is likened unto Yahshua. He's picking up Elijah's mantle, and now he has the power of Elijah, and then he smokes the water, just like what happened on what? The second day of creation, because we just showed you how Elijah had manifested fire, which was on the first day of creation. Now, this is Elijah. He slaps the waters and then he goes to and through the divided waters of the River Jordan. And then when he crosses, it says that the sons of Jerusalem or the sons of Jericho come up to him and says, we got 50 men. Let us go see if Elijah is upon one of these mountains. And then yeah. they said they bugged him until he was ashamed. And then he said, hey, he says, I seen him go up in the whirlwind. It says that they kept begging him. He says, let us send 50 of the prophets to go see if Yahweh dropped them off on one of these mountains. So after they made Elisha uh, feel ashamed, he says, go forth. And what happened? He had to stay, what, three days? One, two, three. You understand what I'm saying? Just like how Yahshua was three days in the heart of the earth, he had to stay there three days, just like how the three days of where we go back until the beginning of plate four, five, and six has to be those three days, those three phenomenal days. You understand what I'm saying? And Elisha says, I told you not to go. You understand what I'm saying? Just like how Yahshua had to be within the heart of the earth for three days. You understand what I'm saying? And this is to show forth how that the scriptures cannot err. You know what I'm saying? In anything. You see? And then Elisha done all his miracles, which had manifested right out here. And see, Elisha even had to go see unto a widow and make her son come back to life. You understand what I'm saying? Just like Elijah, to where when Yahshua said the words that I can do no more, but what I see my father in heaven do, he seen his father do the things as Elijah and Elisha done the same thing so that when Yahshua came in within the flesh to fulfill the things that was within the prophecy, he done the same exact thing that he done right up here when he had manifested in the flesh, see, as Elisha. See? Yep. Hey, man, I'm, I'm telling, telling you. you.
Wow. These scriptures, man, you know what I'm saying? It is so beautiful, man, how they re-manifest themselves over and over and over and over again. You see what I'm saying? So that you, yeah, so that you can be able to understand all the principles that are manifesting right here. See, so that you can understand everything that's taking place within this migratory check chart and the reason why. See, so now we know why, why Elohim went up here and wrote within the tables of stone. See, to verify to Moses, you see what I'm saying, that he was the one within the beginning and based upon the things that happened right here. You see what I'm saying, when the lamb, you know what I'm saying, was shown forth how he was slain before the foundation of the world. And so therefore, all these principles that had manifested here happened within Egypt. Moses witnessed them and withdrew them to show forth how that he was a true and faithful witness. And then to show forth how that the same principles that had manifested with Adam, you understand what I'm saying? That made Adam come up out of the Garden of Eden, had to manifest with Moses. And that's the reason why Moses smoked the rock and Moses could not cross over because the man had to come up out of the garden. You understand what I'm saying? And so therefore, by Moses smoting the rock was likened to the disobedience of Adam within the garden. You understand what I'm saying? And so therefore, he couldn't cross over to get his physical inheritance, just like how the man had to come out from his inheritance out into the land. You understand what I'm saying? Just to show how that the manifestation may change, but the principle will remain the same. Mm -hmm. See? And so those were the things to show forth, see, how that we got the witnesses where we have them to show forth how that man, see, was a manifestation of an angel and to show forth how some have entertained angels unaware and how that man was a representation of the angels would have rep that, that manifested within the spirit. You see? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. To show you how Yahweh Elohim's purpose had took his residence within the physical creation, just like how it did in the angelic. Right here. See? And so now what we have just done See, we have taken the angelic and made it manifest within the physical all the way up into the migration. So therefore, that puts us, you understand what I'm saying here, see, to show you all the things that the Messiah had to fulfill, see, within the 4,000 years of time. You understand what I'm saying? And that's picking up the 15, the 1656, and the 2377 years, which were the 4,000 years that had manifested when the man had came up out of the Garden of Eden, all the way up until the time that Yahweh Elohim said, let this be the first day of the month unto you. You understand what I'm saying? Which established the uh, apothecary and the uh, lunar and the sacred calendar that had manifested all the way back based upon the things that Moses seen right here. See, within the post diluvian age, which is the third age, one, two, three, and the fourth dispensation, which is the number of chains. You see what I'm saying? For Moses to go to and through, you see what I'm saying? The door of the spirit to see the things that were pertaining to eternal life, which had manifested and had everything to do with Yahshua, the son of Nun, which was Yahshua, the Messiah. See, and that's to show you how that within this time that Moses was the only one to see everything that had manifested from the beginning up until, you see what I'm saying, the time of the end. And then to show forth how John, see, which was the revelator, which was another manifestation of Michael, who had not lost his first estate to be able to witness yeah. unto the Messiah, you understand what I'm saying, to write the things that he did. You understand what I'm saying? And so therefore, it showed disobedience by this angel, you know what I'm saying, which was Moses, you see what I'm saying, as a witness to show him how he was faithful and that how Moses picked up the principles of Gabriel, you understand what I'm saying, and Lucifer, you know what I'm saying, in his disobedience. You understand what I'm saying? To where it shows forth how that, when we show forth how Lucifer had lost his placement and then Yahshua, who was Enoch, or Enoch, you know what I'm saying, had, had, had got his placement on the throne, this is the reason why Moses died off out here and then Yahshua, the son of Nun, took him through. And then you had two faithful witnesses, which was Caleb and Yahshua, to show forth the two archangels that sat upon the Ark of the Covenant. You understand what I'm saying? To show you why Moses could not be the one to sit on the Ark of the Covenant because of what he had to manifest, showing forth the principles that got from this compartment to this compartment. And to show you how that Yahshua, the son of Nun, was the one, the one who... Who, who descended was the one who ascended. You understand what I'm saying? To show you the full round trip of who this one Yahshua, the son of Nun was, who Moses identified by being with him out within the wilderness of Sinai to where he was the one to witness unto him here as a faithful witness. See, to manifest the same principles as Gabriel, 
Do you understand what I'm saying? And the archangel on this side of the Ark of the Covenant. And then we just show, of course, how we got Elijah, you know what I'm saying, which is John the Baptist on this side as Michael on the Ark of the Covenant. So we just prove uh, Gabriel and Michael, you understand what I'm saying, by the physical creation and the things that were done. Mm, nice, yeah. So, all that being said, that will conclude our lecture for this evening's class. That was beautiful. I thank you, brother. I, 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 I think that it is just, man, the purpose within itself is phenomenal, man. It is beautiful, you understand? And so this is the reason why that, you know, we must take our time and do our, um, our perception examination according to, you know, what our founder uh, have instructed for us to do. And then once we do that, then everything becomes a whole lot clearer pertaining to the purpose. And then what happens is, is that we have a full and clear understanding of what our creator was doing, opposed to having hypothetics and then adding our own theories, concepts, and opinions. And then, and then not being able to interpret the scriptures based upon what Yahweh Elohim meant based upon the things that he had done previously in the ages beforehand. Yeah, that's, that's like the Sanhedrin council and, and the Sadducees uh, persecuting Yahshua, thinking they knew what they were talking about and, and, and he was uh, Yahweh in a body. That's right, that's exactly. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna end on time, and then you know if there's any uh, uh, on auxiliary, uh, auxiliary time, if you know you have anything that you would like to share or whatever Yahweh has revealed to you, uh, please feel free to share, Doc. You know because see, um, you are are one of the individuals who uh, help with this project. You are one of the ones who Yahweh has seen fit to not only help with this project but be able to see uh, uh, basically you know, majority, all of the spiritual principles that um, he has provided because of your knowledge that he's blessed you with by his spirit that he placed in you. See, so all you're doing is witnessing to the things that you already know that he already revealed to you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not telling you nothing, nothing new. All I'm doing is, is putting the things in its proper placement and in a proper perspective so that you can see the overturning and overturning of our creator based upon when he says that I'm Yahweh and I change not. Let me end on time and then we can we can get off into, you know, uh, you know, these other things. So I'll be reading to you uh, the doxology out of Romans, um, the 16th chapter uh, verses um, 25 through um, 27. And it reads as follows. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Yahshua the Messiah according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifested by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandments of, ever, of the everlasting Elohim, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To Yahweh only wise be glory through Yahshua Messiah forever. Hallelujah. 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 You know, but yeah, you know, um, that's the, uh, that is the beauty of it, you know, um, to be able to have um, a faithful witness, man, and then to be able to see um, um, Yahweh's, um, you know, manifest himself over and over again, you know, to see, you know, uh, him perpetuate, you know, that's the beauty of it, you know, and then to be able to um, look within his scriptures and then be able to see it not only here, but here and in here, see, you know, yeah. and that's, that's, that's man, we you know when it's like that, you know, that really, you know what I'm saying? It, it just really drives home the truth, man. There ain't nothing that you can do about it. You know, you can't fabricate it. You can't do nothing with it. You see what I'm saying? And so, and when you have it like that, um, that dispels any, any false doctrine, man. You know what I mean? It just, mm -hmm. it, Spells it because if you can't see it from the realm of eternity and see it um, perpetuate all the way unto Yahshua the Messiah, it's not true. It's not true, and it just this is all it is to it, man. It's you know, 
Well, Yahweh's just tearing down that veil. I mean, some people just still have that veil up mm -hmm. in the yeah. uh, concept, theories, and opinions. That's, that's that. I, I don't know what veil that is. I think it's the second veil, which separates the most holy place to the holy place. But uh, yeah, you know, there, there's always a veil separating, you know, because it was dark in the most holy place and and uh, it can't, comp well, no, I'm, I'm chopping that up. Uh, the light shined in the darkness and the darkness comprehended not. That's right, that's right. And that, that separation is that veil as well. I, I've been studying up on the veils on how they function and, and how they rightly divide uh, the greater, more perfect tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know, um, this, this allows us to be able to see what our creator was doing, um, you know, especially when he was tabernacling with us and then as well as, you know, to see um, a, what he has always been doing when he has been within his creation, you know, so, mm. you know, it says a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this, this is a lot of uh, information tonight. It's oh, yeah. I mean, but you got to understand all the information which we've been going over doing the um, direction and perception examination based on breaking down the allergies us taking it from pure spirit, um, coming, you know what I'm saying, into corporal realization, you know what I'm saying, and taking it all the way back. You understand what I'm saying? We have been going over these same principles ever since that we started. All we did was, was show how that all those principles from the beginning, okay, from the creative age, had manifested within the post diluvian age to where everybody in the world see that that was the greatest manifestation that Yahweh Elohim ever manifested himself in was when he had manifested himself to the children of Israel. And all of those people, when I'm talking about Aaron, Nadab, and Abayu, and the 70 elders being able to see Yahweh Elohim at one time. You know what I'm saying? That was the most people who ever seen Yahweh Elohim at one given time. You understand what I'm saying? That he manifested himself as spirit. You know what I'm saying? And so that, like I said, that was the greatest manifestation to the world to where the theologians and everybody else go back, you understand what I'm saying, to try to sit up and understand what Yahweh Elohim was doing and not, you know what I'm saying, paying attention to what um, Elder Van Hook was saying to where we're talking about those colons. You see know what I'm saying? That's over there in um, Exodus. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To where Moses got caught up and started to write Genesis about, you know what I mean, uh, the 20, you know, from the 20th, what, 24th uh, uh, chapter of Exodus. Yeah. Maybe the 24th, 25th, you know, chapter of Exodus, you know what I'm saying, to where um, he started to write the days of creation. You see what I'm saying? And see, yeah. you know, it took Yahweh himself to come in and let the whole world know that when he wrote that in his book and sent that to all the um, religious heads of the world. They didn't know that. You understand what I'm saying? And so therefore, you know, that's what we have basically been explaining, going through and showing forth how with all that stuff that Moses wrote, you see what I'm saying? to bring it up to show how Moses had to go through him himself. And hey, and if he was Yahweh in the body, you could almost say that Moses fulfilled, you know what I'm saying, everything that happened based upon everything before he wrote it, because he went through it. You understand what I'm saying? See? So hey, you know, you just got to look at it and see the only thing that the Messiah did, he came in and buried it in blood, which is his blood as the only acceptable sacrifice. You see what I'm saying? So that's what made, when Yahshua did it, greater than, than any other uh, manifestation of, of one who we say that's a quote unquote prophet. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, see, Yahweh, Yahshua's uh, sacrifice was more sweet savor because uh, before that was when Israel went to servitude, they were making so many sacrifices from all their sins, it began to stink. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't given off a sweet savor, so. That's why Yahshua was more acceptable because they, people were just sinning left and right during during their servitude and and uh, after well, Moses uh, died. Well, you got to understand that when they were in servitude, that they was forced to serve the deities of the Gentiles. Okay. So you know that was kind of like beyond their control, and um, that's the reason why that you had so many prophets pop up during the time they was in servitude. Uh, based upon the time that they was in their home in their own land you understand what i'm saying and so uh they was forced to serve different deities we see what happened with daniel see mm -hmm. you know what i mean through him in the lines then because they said if you know you don't bow down to our deity or don't pray to nothing 
or no one, but you know, to the deity that um, Nebuchadnezzar put up. You see what I'm saying? That didn't work out too well. See? So, you know, that's that's when we get off into history. We're gonna get off into the servitudes of Israel. But basically what we're trying to do now is just get basically to the establishment of the law before we get into the prophets and then be able to see how we see Yahweh Elohim manifested himself down from um, his angelic creation, then his creation as a man. You see what I'm saying? Then go back into super incorporeal form that is above the angels. You understand what I'm saying? Before his manifestation, before he goes back into the spirit. You know what I mean? To show you how that when the scripture says that he was received up in glory and sat down at the right hand of the father or the majesty on high. How did he sit down on the right hand of the majesty to where we see him sitting in the middle of the throne in the cloud? We just proved that. We just proved that. You understand what I'm saying? See, people are not paying attention to the scriptures or what they're listening to and what's being said. You see what I'm saying? Now, we showed you how he went and sat down on the right hand of the Father. He sat down on the right hand of the Father because he pleased Elohim. That's what Enoch said. And remember when we read over there in Matthew, the 20th chapter, when um, James' mother asked Yahshua, he says, grant me uh, one thing, put him on your left and him on your right hand of your throne. Yahshua said that it's not mine, you know what I'm saying, to give that place to. It's whoever my father in heaven gives my right hand and my left hand of my throne to. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we went over the scriptures to prove that, to show forth. You understand what I'm saying? See? Yeah. We showed that. Now we showed you how Yahshua went and sat down on the right hand of the throne of the father, because that's where Lucifer was kicked off at. You understand what I'm saying? And to show you how that Yahshua was, see, the faithful witness. And that's why he says, he says, no one knows the father save the son and no one knows the son save the father. You see what I'm saying? And he proved that when he sat on the throne, when it says that Enoch said that he pleased Elohim. And then we go over there to Matthew, the third chapter, when the heavens opened up, and said that this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So it shows you, see, that he was a whole brass band. It shows that he was a whole brass band. He was doing it all himself. You see what I'm saying? And sat yeah. down. And sat down on the right hand. See? And then sat down in the cloud to where he told uh, Aaron, he says, don't uh, come at all times into the most holy place or I will appear, you know what I'm saying, in the cloud in between the two cherubims. You understand what I'm saying? See? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got to take it and rightly dispensate the word of truth, rightly divide the word of truth, rightly divide it. Don't just hear it and skip over it. If you don't take it and rightly divide it, then you could take anything that's said for however you want to, because you just speculate instead of proving it. And you say, well, I heard it, but I, I guess I wasn't paying attention to it. it you know, I, I just know that he went through a death, burial, resurrection, and then he went up there, you know what I'm saying, ascended to the Father. But where did he ascend to? And when and what time? You see? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, man. yeah. Yeah. So, you know, this is uh, what we have to do. We have to sharpen um, our, our, our perplexity. You know, we have to sharpen up yeah. our skills, our listening tools, our, our seeing tools. You know what I'm saying? And then follow the rules and guidelines, you see what I'm saying, of what Yahweh himself said when he manifested as Dr. Henry C. Kenley, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and dwelt in tabernacle amongst us. Can't nobody, can't nobody make no pictures, man, and then draw them in order, you know what I'm saying, 40 times, one, two, three, and then fit the whole entire Bible? Can't nobody do that. No. Just, like, just like how these two charts behind me fit the whole entire Bible. I couldn't do yeah. that. You understand what I'm saying? It was a spirit that was in me that did that. I couldn't do that. I couldn't tell you the things that I'm telling you about his purpose if he did not tell me. Just like how he says, um, how he speaks to Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. That's how yeah. Yahweh speaks to me so that I can speak and just tell you plainly about the things that's going on in the charts, the things that's going on in the scriptures. He just tells me. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So just as he tells me, I tell you freely. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that doesn't make me smart or better than nobody else. You understand what I'm saying? It's just that I had a conversation with the creator and I'm having the same conversation that I have with the creator with everybody else. You understand what I'm saying? To make them one as we are one. You understand what I'm yep. saying? And freely as I 
receive it as freely as I give. You understand what I'm saying? He didn't charge me for it, so what I'm gonna charge you for? It? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna pass out, you know, uh, uh, my tithe, tithe, you understand what I'm saying? Pass that around, you know what I'm saying? Come on now, you know? That's why, you know, the scripture says, will thou rob a loan? Hmm. Right. Can't rob him, man, it's his, you know? Yeah. Right, right. right. It was, so. it was Right, right. So, you know, yeah. so, you know, that, uh, that's just that in a nutshell, man. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to get into some more stuff, uh, our next class, you know, Yahweh willing. And, um, you know, we're going to keep on going because there's more, there's more this, you know, you just don't get to the, uh, to the migratory <laughs> trek chart and then get to, to Yahshua Messiah and stop. There's more mysteries on, on, on the charts. We got to go. Oh, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? But we have to take the um, the um, perception and direction exam to be able to understand the principles. You know what I'm saying? That's leading you to the Messiah because the Messiah is the schoolmaster. See, you know, everything that we're doing right now is a schoolmaster to lead us to the Messiah. Because yeah. once we get to the, to the Messiah, we can't use the examination anymore. What happens is, is that we have to apply the exam. Okay. See, so we almost there. We gonna do it in a minute because in a minute it's gonna be like a oh, test day. It's test day. Ain't no more, ain't no more examinations. The examinations is to get you ready for the real test. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, by the time we get, you know what I mean? And show forth and finish showing forth how the Messiah have fulfilled those things. We are gonna keep going back and show, see? And once we do that, the perception and direction examination will be over and then it will be the applications of the exam in real in real form you see what i'm saying wow um, just like how the priest had to practice before uh that's right before, before he, he done, done the tabernacle that's exactly so exactly so it doesn't change man it doesn't mm -hmm. change so you know that's why you know we gotta you know stay Stay dedicated, man. You know what I'm saying? And stay focused and stay doing the things that Yahweh have us doing. And we will, you know, see a whole lot more pertaining to his purpose. And then what happens is, is that, you know, I even know now that on how you are seeing things now, when you read the scriptures and you're doing your research, you're like, oh, things changed. The words didn't change, but my understanding has changed greatly based upon the things that I'm understanding <clears throat> by us going right. over them principles over and over again. See the scriptures are being clear, coming, becoming more clearer and clearer. Yep, I know because they, hey, they, they are for me. And even though that I'm going over and more, over and over and over again, they become more clearer and vivid for me every time that I read them. Every time that I go over these principles, man, you know. So, I like how Yahweh revealed to me how the trees they just stand there, but they they change their appearance just like in each uh, compartment of the seasons. And each season represents the compartments like fall, winter, spring, and summer. So like in fall, the trees are, they're, they're a different color. That's a different appearance. And then when they uh, go through winter, they, they don't have no uh, leaves or anything. But when they go into the holy place, uh, they start budding. And then uh, that's like, you know, again, that's like the priest changing his robe. So I'm always seeing Yahweh's purpose on the earth plane, of course, and how we pass through the veils and and how we change our appearance and and he shows me that so uh yeah that's that's, that's, that's right and, and the season the seasons is talking about his death burial and resurrection you know what i mean the same yeah. thing you know you know falls like unto the death winter is burial spring is resurrection summer is you know ascension you know mm -hmm. same thing man so yeah i i understand exactly what you're saying and then i i understand exactly because he's showing you different manifestations pertaining to the seasons you understand what i'm saying but it all leads to the messiah see mm -hmm. it's all his is his story so yeah you know that's what it's about man you know and like he says with all thy getting get the uh understanding yep get the understanding yeah 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 so hey well, uh, i see why you, you say the blue is transition because uh the priests also wore blue when when you look at the top of the tabernacle 
when he's in the whole, most holy place. That's right. Transition there. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then we understand that he's transitioning from the holy place to the most holy place. And then we got to understand that from the holy place, when he goes into the most holy place, that's him going from the realm of time into the realm of eternity, because the most holy place manifests eternity. Yeah. See, we showed you that, you know what I'm saying? I'm play four with the gold seal around there. That's eternity. And he goes in the realm of eternity, sprinkling blood seven times. See? And then, he, and then he leaves. He goes back up there again, sprinkles blood seven more times. See? And then on his third trip, he goes up there one more time. You understand what I'm saying? See? And see, when he goes up there that third time, he doesn't go all the way back down to the court roundabout. He just goes, you know what I'm saying, to the holy place, to the most holy place. And then after he does it, he sprinkles again. Then that's when he gets to Shekinah. And then that's when he comes down. And that Shekinah does not happen until 12, 12 to 1230. In between that time, that's the only time it's going to flash. And if it don't flash, that means he didn't do it correctly. But trust me. If Yahweh let him leave the most holy place to come out to go do it again, he did it right. You understand what I'm saying? Or he would have died in the process of doing it. See, mm -hmm. the world don't know that. Idemar don't know that. And they don't teach that or preach that in the world or in Idemar. They say that he goes up there, you know what I'm saying, sprinkle blood. And after he does it, it, it flashes. So they, the way that they preach it in, in the Idemar, that he goes up three times and in, in the second night flashes three times. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, hey. I look at that heart in the uh, most holy place. It it also looks like a mouth. Yeah, it does. Because because uh, if you go over to the uh, the human chart, you see the word law written in the mouth, and and it's shaped like a heart as well. And 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 you can see you know that the the tables of stone that that Moses put the second tables of stone they were law, and so everything that Yahweh speaks is, is law, and and it doesn't come back to him void. So, right, right. And and you remember that just like um, when we were, uh, let me see, when we was talking about this chart right here. Oh, give me a second. Let me get it off the wall. I should have just turned the camera around to it, but I didn't feel like it. Oh, you're okay. Well, matter of fact, I don't even feel like getting it off the wall. I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Here. Now, do you see that uh, the arts, the, uh, the circle of, of, let me point to it, what I'm talking about. Now you see this right here, the cerebellum right here. Yeah. It's uh -huh. a heart. Is you see that heart? <laughs> wow. So now, now you know why the law had to be a shape of a heart put in the Ark of the Covenant in the most holy place. You understand what I'm saying? We went over these principles when we was talking about the vertebrates and the spine and the nerves and the spinal column. You understand what I'm saying? See? Yeah. So this shows you, and then you see the cranial cavity, you understand what I'm saying? Look at that heart. It ain't nothing but a big heart. Your, your body is ain't nothing but hearts within a heart within a heart. Here's a heart, here's a heart. Yeah. A heart within a heart. You understand what I'm saying? Within a heart. It's just showing you. And that's how our body is made up. You understand what I'm saying? So this is why I'm trying to sit up and share with you. You understand what I'm saying? Just like how you say how it had to go back into the most holy place. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it did. You see what I'm saying? And that's why. Because he says that our bodies are fearfully and wondrously made. You understand what I'm saying? So it goes back to all that, man. You see what I mean? And now we know why. Now we know the real reason why all these things are the way that they are. Because all we got to do is look back in time. And, you know, Yahweh had manifested in the flesh. Couldn't be nobody but Yahweh to show us what happened in the realm of eternity based upon those hearts. You understand what I'm saying? For us to be able to look at the physical things as far as the Ark of the Covenant, that's in shape of a heart, being a three-point configuration piece of furniture, and then with the things therein. You see what I'm saying? It didn't show us how we are made exactly like it. Mm -hmm. It had to be the creator, man. And look at the dove. Uh, right. when, when dove's wings are... Uh... Put, put in their place yeah. and you look at the dove it's almost shaped like a heart as well hey every time you know what i'm saying and look at saying yahweh yahweh i mean you know when we walk yahweh you know <laughs> you can't your heart yahweh 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 you know what i mean people don't people don't put it together and, people and don't that's put it why together. nothing escapes that pattern nothing nothing you see what i'm saying your heartbeat 
says Yahweh. When you breathe, Yahweh. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So your inner man is saying Yahweh, and then when you breathe, it's saying Yahweh. So, you know, hey, man, we serve an awesome air. Yep. We serve an awesome air. Well, brother, um, it was a pleasure. I love you, man. And um, I, hope to see, I hope to see you next class. I hope that you got something out of this class. I hope you learned something. I hope you've seen something, um, you know, because that's what it's about. And if there's some things that you're not sure about, um, look at look look at it and ask questions. You know what I'm saying? Next time, you know, we get together, you know? Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So, Shalom once again. All right. Yeah. I had to head on back and uh, get things done in the house. And uh, yeah, I'll see you uh, Wednesday. Okay, Yahweh willing. Yeah, Yahweh willing. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Okay. Nice.